A very good evening and welcome to the 11 o'clock news broadcast live from Bahrain International with me, Danielle Deporto. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Orders number 38 and 39 for this year, 2017. Article 1 of Royal Decree number 38 approved the retirement request of the President of the Court of Cassation, Vice President of the Supreme Judiciary Council, Councillor Salim bin Mohammed Al Khawari. The second article of the Royal Order appointed Councillor Abdullah bin Hassan Al Bohinain as President of the Court of Cassation with the rank of ex officio minister and vice president of the Supreme Judicial Council. Article 3 of the order named Councillor Masuma Abdul Rasul Issa as a puny judge at the, of, at the Court of Cassation, and Article 4 of the order stipulated that it would all take effect from the date of its issuance and publication in the official Gazette. Article 1 of Royal Decree Number 39 named Councillor Nawaf Abdullah Abdulaziz Hamza as President of the Legislation and Legal Opinion Commission at the rank of Under Secretary. Under the same royal order, Chancellor Mohammed Ahmed Ali Al Makbal has been named as Deputy President of the Legislative and Legal Opinion Commission. The royal order shall take effect from its date of its promulgation and will be published in the official gazette. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting today at Gudebia Palace. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister thanked the representatives and Shura councils for their fruitful cooperation with the government in preparing the general state budget for the two fiscal years 2017 to 2018 and for the compatibility amongst the two authorities on the budget's principles and strategies. The cabinet strongly condemned the terrorist attacks targeting a security patrol in Khatif Governorate whilst performing its national duty of maintaining security. The cabinet affirmed Bahrain's support to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in all procedures it takes to fight terrorism and to protect its security and stability, also affirming Bahrain's rejection of terrorism. The cabinet also strongly condemned the terrorist attack targeting security checkpoints north of Sinai, affirming their solidarity with the Arab Republic of Egypt and support of all procedures it takes to maintain its security and stability. His Royal Highness then followed up on directives to service ministries in meeting the needs of Al Daraz, Ali, Maharik and Hamid Town regarding housing and municipal services, public utilities, roads and sanitation. He also took note of preparations for launching operational programs detailed in reports presented by the Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning. His Royal Highness the Premier called for car parking spaces in old neighbourhoods, approving the acquirement of five sites in Khalali for public parking spaces, also directing the Minister of Works to issue expropriation decisions in light of the memorandum he submitted. His Royal Highness also extended the period of shrimp fishing to allow fishing season to begin from August 1st, in response to requests from fishermen, also directing the concerned bodies to take into account the timing of the prohibition of shrimp fishing in Bahrain in relation to other GCC countries. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also directed that the cleanliness of beaches and harbours be addressed to ensure they are free of any waste in the vicinity of the port of Bandar al-Dar, directing the Ministry of Works to ensure the validity of contracts with cleaning companies. He stressed the importance of meeting health as well as security and safety requirements in collective and joint housing for labourers in accordance with applicable resolutions and regulations and instructed the concerned bodies to review contracts relating to the housing of labourers and to continue the comprehensive survey of the residents of bachelors in line with the proposal submitted by the Representatives Council. The Cabinet approved the targeting of 15 to 29-year-olds for Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports programmes in a manner that does not conflict international standards or existing legislation without extending the enactment of legislation, as recommended by the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs. The Cabinet also approved Bahrain's hosting of the first founding meeting to formulate an Arab implementation strategy for the use of cloud computing in education, organized by the Arab League Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, based on a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Education. The Cabinet referred to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs three air service agreements between the Kingdom of Bahrain and Malaysia, Brunei Darussalam and Brazil, based on a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Transportation and Communications. 
As part of the Cabinet's keenness to toughen sanctions on the use of narcotics and the prohibition of their importation, the Cabinet approved classifying shabu as a narcotic substance rather than a psychotropic one, and accordingly transferred it from the second group of psychotropic substances to the first group of narcotics table, referred to in the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substance Law of number Law number 15 of 2007. The Cabinet discussed a number of proposals submitted by the Representatives' Council and approved the draft of the government's response as recommended by the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs. As part of counter-terrorism operations and in continuation of the investigation into the Daraz blast on June 18th, in which one policeman was killed and two were seriously injured, security authorities have arrested a dangerous terrorist involved in the case and identified the remaining suspects. The investigation will continue to find out if there are any links between the suspects and other terrorist cells. It revealed that the terrorist act was committed by Hussein Abdullah Marhoun Rashid, 26, arrested with a Kalashnikov gun seized from him. He had been convicted for a blast in Daraz in October 2014, an arson attack and for assaulting police personnel. And also Syed Mohammed Hassan Mohammed Hassan Fadl, 25, a fugitive. He was sentenced to life imprisonment in a terrorist case and was involved in a bomb blast in Daraz in February 2016 and in manufacturing and possessing bombs. The investigation also revealed that the terror group operated, in terms of financing, planning and execution, under the direct supervision of Hussein Ali Ahmed Dawood, a fugitive, aged 31, in Iran, whose nationality has been revoked. He was involved in setting up many terrorist cells and plotting terrorist crimes, which resulted in policemen's deaths. He was sentenced to life imprisonment in three cases and was given a 15-year jail term in one case. He runs terror cells and works as a field coordinator for the Sarai al-Ashtar terrorist group and has strong links with the Iranian Revolutionary Guard as well as Murtada al-Sindi. And Ahmed Mohammed Ali Mahdi Ibrahim Zain al-Din, 25, a fugitive convicted in cases related to the establishment of terrorist cells involved in committing terrorist acts, attacking police patrols with homemade weapons and possessing bombs. The General Directorate of Criminal Investigation and Forensic Science has taken the relevant legal steps and referred the case to the public prosecutor. The investigation continues to arrest the, the remaining suspects. The Interior Ministry has affirmed that it is going ahead with its counter-terrorism operations to bring terrorists to justice and maintain the security of the nation, safety of the public and civil peace. It has asked people to report any suspicious activity by calling the community hotline on 8000-8008. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khaled bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, received a phone call from Italy's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Angelino Avano, in which they discussed friendly bilateral relations and other recent regional developments. Sheikh Khaled bin Ahmed praised the progress of bilateral relations, stressing the need to combat all forms of terrorism, calling for stronger international efforts and cooperation. For his part, Alvano affirmed Italy's keenness for cooperation and coordination with the Kingdom of Bahrain and its support of all reasonable means to achieve security and stability for the region's countries and people, wishing Bahrain continued prosperity and success. 